Pairing the right GPU with Intel's Core Ultra 7 265K isn't just about spending more, it's about balance. In this video, I compare the best graphics cards across three tiers. Budget for 1080p, mid-range for 1440p, and premium monsters for 4K. Stick around to see which one actually makes the most sense for your build. First, let's talk about the budget GPUs you might pair with the Core Ultra 7 265K. At this level, you've got three real options. AMD's RX 9060 XT with 16 gigs of memory, Nvidia's RTX 5060 Ti in its 16 gig version, and Intel's ARC B580. All three will run 1080p great and can stretch into 1440p, but they have their differences. The ARC B580 is the cheapest way in, and for esports it's actually fine, but driver issues still pop up often enough that it's not something you'd call hassle-free. The RTX 5060 Ti is stronger when you care about ray tracing or DLSS4 with frame generation, but that comes with a higher price tag and a little less raw raster performance than AMD's option. The RX 90 60 XT stands out because it pairs solid performance with a full 16 gigs of VRAM. That extra buffer means you won't get boxed in by new games that eat memory fast. Compare that to 8 gig cards and the difference shows up quickly at higher settings. So for me, the GPU that makes the most sense is the Radeon RX 9060 XT with 16 gigs. This card handles modern 1080p easily and does well at 1440p if you don't crank every setting to the ceiling. It's efficient, it stays cooler than past budget cards, and you don't run into the same memory walls that make some 8GB GPUs feel outdated already. The one downside is ray tracing. Nvidia still wins if you're set on playing every title with heavy ray tracing, but in most cases, smart use of upscaling balances that out. If you'd rather lean into DLSS 4 and Nvidia software ecosystem, the RTX 5060 Ti with 16 gigs is your alternative. Just avoid the cut down 8 gig cards. When you shop, the safer RX 9060 XT partner cards are Sapphire's Pulse model, which is compact and quiet, and PowerColor's Reaper, which gives you a beefier cooler without being oversized. Both are well reviewed, and either will pair comfortably with the 265K. Next up is the overall best choice, what you'd call the sweet spot for most people. Here you're looking at AMD's RX 9070 XT, Nvidia's RTX 5070 Ti with 16 gigs, and the regular RTX 5070 with 12 gigs. These are the cards meant for high refresh 1440p and very capable 4K if you're willing to tweak settings. In testing, the RX 9070 XT often matches or beats the 5070 Ti in raw rasterized games. The 5070 Ti fights back with stronger ray tracing and DLSS4, plus multi-frame generation, which can boost smoothness in demanding titles. The regular 5070 is cheaper, but its 12 gig frame buffer can feel tight in heavier games, so it's more of a compromise card. All three can work with the 265K, but only one really nails value. The one that makes the most sense as the best mid-range option is the Radeon RX 9070 XT. With the 9070 XT, you get excellent performance at 1440p, respectable at 4K, and 16 gigs of memory that hold up better over time. Ray tracing and AI features are much improved compared to AMD's older generations, so you don't feel left out in modern games. The one caveat is still ray tracing. Nvidia's cards keep a lead there, but in every other respect, this is the balanced pick. Partner cards worth looking at include Sapphire's Nitro Plus, which is often called one of the quietest premium coolers out there, Power Color's Hellhound for a simple and quiet option with black or white styling, and Asus Tough, which gives you a sturdy design with conservative thermals. If you prefer Nvidia's ecosystem, the RTX 5070 Ti with 16 gigs is the closest rival. It costs more, but brings DLSS 4 and better ray tracing performance, so if that's a priority, it's the smarter Nvidia play. As mentioned before, the RTX 5070 is another option, but you should only consider it if the price is much lower and you're okay managing around its smaller 12 gig buffer. Finally, let's look at the premium end, the cards you choose when you want no compromises.
Here, it's mostly between NVIDIA's RTX 5090 and the RTX 5080. Both are monsters, but they're not equal. The 5090 sits at the top of every benchmark chart and comfortably outpaces the 5080, especially in ray tracing and 4K workloads. The 5080 is still strong, excellent for 4K gaming when paired with DLSS 4 and frame generation, but if you want pure headroom and don't want to think about GPU limits for years, the 5090 is unmatched. The trade-offs are obvious. Size, power draw, and the price. With cards this big, you need a strong power supply, solid airflow, and a case that can actually fit them. So the one that actually deserves the no compromise tag is the GeForce RTX 5090. With this card, the bottleneck shifts away from your GPU entirely. You'll be limited by your monitor long before you run out of performance. It dominates 4K with ray tracing and DLSS 4, plus multi-frame generation smooths the frame rate even in the most demanding games. It's also the go-to card if you do heavy creative work, since CUDA and Optics Acceleration give it an edge in rendering and video production. The downside is pretty clear. It's huge, it's power-hungry, and it's expensive. That's why the RTX 5080 exists. If you want Elite 4K, but you don't need absolutely everything maxed, the 5080 is more practical. But if you want the ceiling, the 5090 is the right fit. Partner cards to look for are MSI's Supreme line, either air-cooled or the Supreme Liquid, both of which perform well for noise and thermal handling, and Asus Tough, which is a little more compact but still has a robust cooler and a quieter fan curve. Just make sure your case and PSU are ready for the job.